I have 12.15, so good noontime and welcome to Rotary. We're so glad that you're here with us today. We have a wonderful program scheduled for you. And Pep, would you be so kind as to bring us to order today? I will be happy to. Good morning, God. We thank you for another day. You have given us peace. You have given us joy. And Father, you've given us good friends and loved ones. And Lord, you have allowed uh, membership into a thing called Rotary. And you have allowed us to just fellowship in our little tiles on our, on our screens. So we ask that you will bless us. All those that have food on the table, bless us. But most of all, God, we thank you for our friendship and our fellowship in the Rotary Organization. And we ask that you will bless us in this gathering and that all things will continue to work well together. In the name of Jesus, I pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. And Richard, would you like to lead us in pledge today? Glad to. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. And Robert, would you like to lead us in song today? Well, I'll sure give it a try. R-O-T-A-R-Y, that spells Rotary. R-O-T-A-R-Y, it's from north to south, from east to west, to prof is most who serves the best. R-O-T-A-R-Y, that spells Rotary. Thank you so much, sir. Wonderful job, wonderful job. And let's see here, who do we have with us today? Uh, I don't think we have any visiting Rotarians, but I do know that I forgot to say hello to Chris. Good morning, Chris. And hello, Claudia. And let's see, do we have some guests here? Oh, and everybody say hi to Fred. Hopefully he can see us. He's sort of a guest. Hi, Fred. Fred. <laughs> and uh, we have Dr. Sissy Perez with us today, one of our prospective members. Hello, Sissy. Thanks for being with us. Hello. And we have Christine Hoskinson, one of our prospective members. Thank you, Christine, for being here with us. Let's see. I think that is everybody aside from our special guest today, which we will get to in just one minute. We have a birthday coming up. Mark Hussey turns 31 on January 6th. And so everybody make sure to call Mark. You know, I think that's the wrong date, actually. I'll check that date. Check your bulletin, actually. The correct date is in the bulletin. Regardless, everybody be sure to call Mark on his birthday. If you don't have his number, go to the Club Runner app on your phone and look it up. If you don't have it on your phone, go to Club Runner on your computing device and look it up. If you have any trouble, call your very favorite officer or director of your Rotary Club and we will help you. We have a couple rotary anniversaries. Yesterday, Charles turned a rotary 38. And today, Uche turns a rotary 22. If you're wondering where has Uche been for 22 years, well, he started rotary on a different continent. And rotary followed him here to Kingsville. And so, go to your Club Runner app and call Charles and call Uche and wish them a very happy Rotary anniversary. Do we have any happy dollar announcements today? Mm -hmm. 
Nothing happening. Okie dokie, not a problem. We did have a great question, though, from Maria. Maria, would you like to repeat your question for the class? <laughs> great classroom management skills there, El Presidente. Um, I'm actually wondering if you could go over how um, our dues are being worked out. Also, if you could also review how to pay your dues, just in case things have changed for those of us who are re-engaging. Wonderful question. Thank you so much. And so, with our new Rotary year, which is now uh, six months and two weeks old, uh, we began a new Rotary or club dues structure. And so in the past, we paid dues quarterly. And so three months at a time, everything was lumped together. With this current Rotary year, um, our board has elected to break those payments up into smaller bite size pieces. And so we're invoiced monthly uh, for our club dues and those kinds of things. And so the breakdown of our club dues is it's $15 for dues but there's also a $10 uh, donation toward uh, the annual fund. The annual fund is one of the funds of the Rotary Foundation, TRF, and these dollars go up to Rotary. They are invested for three years, and in three years, we get those dollars back in the form of district-designated funds for district grants and for uh, international grants, things of that nature. And so, you know, when we have a, an international project like the Nepal project, the rabbit project, then we're getting those dollars through the district. And so that's what the annual fund does. And so that's the $25 per month, which is our new dues, dues with the annual fund. And you probably also see another $10 suggestion, uh, and thank you, Jadine, for sharing some information with us here on your screen. So there's another $10 that is uh, suggested for polio donations. And so that's the new breakdown of our dues structure. And if you would like to pay by check, you can send that to our PO box. And Allison, our treasurer, will pick that up if you prefer to pay online with a card then you can go to our Square account, which Jadine is about to click on. And that will take you to our Square site. Yes, ma'am. So the, back in the day um, when we paid our dues, I was just going through my emails. So back in the day, we used to receive a receipt once we had paid. Um, does that still happen? And Because maybe I need to check my junk email or something like that, but um, do we still receive an email receipt? And if not, can we start that again? So were you paying online or directly Correct. to, okay. Online. So that receipt should be coming directly from Square. Mm -hmm. If it's not, um, then we can absolutely look into the guts of Square uh, and see okay. why those receipts aren't going out. I believe I get a receipt um, when those come through, can anybody else verify? Getting getting some head nods. Get okay, and so uh, Maria, we will look into that and see. Um, it might be that your email uh, server is blocking those. Uh, they might look uh, kind of spammy or something like that. Uh, but yeah, those come directly from Square. But we will absolutely look into that for you. Now, thank you. You can yes, yes, of course. Now you can also go into the guts of Club Runner under your Club Runner account and look for your payment history. Um, and there's also a way to print those things out. And if you would, uh, if you need any more information on that, then we would be happy to walk you through that. Is there a part that I didn't answer yet? You did awesome, thank you. I appreciate Thanks, you. Maria. Thanks. And the check is in the mail for that. Let's see. Uh, and with that, thank you so much for that question again, because that feeds quite nicely 
into our foundation update. And so we just learned what the annual fund is and how that helps us to do good works in the world. And to give us two good examples of that, we go to our international service director, Richard Hartwig. Richard, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Justin. I wanted to say a few words about the, uh, the Rabbit Project in Nepal. We've been supporting the Rabbit Project since um, six years now. And we got our first grant uh, in 2015. This year, we got a grant for a new Rabbit Project, a $10,000 project. We got a $5,000 grant from the our Rotary District. And then we contributed. And the uh, Rotary Club of Tapurshwar, we've been working with in Nepal, in Kathmandu, they contributed a couple thousand dollars as well. So I just got a, an email from Ushwa. Shampa Gain is our is the man who's implementing. He's the uh, owner of the Himalayan Rabbit Farm. He sent me an email in December saying that they distributed rabbits, breeding rabbits, to uh, to ten families. I got another email January 7th. They distributed rabbits to another 25 households with the district governor there. And Ushwal is really terrific. He's got to make them making a video on this. They had uh, media, they had shop owners, meat, oh, sh meat shop owners, restaurateurs. Um, anyway, it's, it's really going well, it's extraordinary well. Uh, we also have, of course, we have the uh, Davi Servir scholarship program, Dara means uh, give and serve in Spanish. The scholarship program has been going on for, I don't know, 30 or 40 years in Monterey, Mexico. And they've, they've allowed something like over 200 students in poor and often dangerous neighborhoods to get high school and then university degrees. It's really quite amazing. And I got a letter recently from Susan uh, Morera, who came and talked to us online recently, a couple months ago, and then in person with her family, with her husband, Hector, uh, about a year ago. And she asked the students to write a little note about their scholarships. So I'd like to read one from Fermin. Fermin is a student in a rather dangerous neighborhood. His mother uh, got hit by a straight bullet at one point not too long ago, and they had to take her down to the bottom of the mountain because where they live, the ambulances wouldn't come up. <clears throat> anyway, this is Fermin's letter. It says, good afternoon. Hope everyone is in good health and had a very peaceful and safe Christmas. These six years, I've had your total support and I have not words to say how grateful I am with each one of you. Definitely the scholarship of Dari Sevier changed completely my life. It motivated me to put so much more effort in all my purposes and belief believe in my capacities. Now I've finished another great chapter of my life. This December, I've concluded my degree. I'm so happy for this big achievement. This is a university degree. I'm very proud of myself and deeply grateful with my family for belief in me, believe in me, and of course, eternally thankful with you for helping me to make this happen. The graduation ceremony is set to be realized in April most likely to be virtual due to obvious reasons. I wish you a very great 2021 full of hope, recovery, and happiness. He wasn't asked to write in English, but he did. It's really quite, a, quite amazing. Anyway, I'm very pleased with this as well. Well, this year we haven't had as much money to contribute as we usually do because we haven't had online meetings, we haven't had in-person meetings, and we, we didn't have a raffle. But anyway, we, we're gonna make about a half contr contribution this year. The kids get $250 per semester, and that it's incredible. That allows them to be in school for a semester, $250. It's quite amazing. And they get this twice, twice a year, each semester. Anyway, I'm very pleased with both of our projects. And of course, also we have we, uh, our Tom graduate in Kingsville person, Tiffany Trevino, received a Rotary Global Grant last year to get, finish her master's degree in New Zealand. She, she will go once New Zealand accepts people from the United States, once the COVID situation is finished. So anyway, I think we're doing well. Congratulations to all of us. 
Well, that's wonderful, Richard. Thanks so much. We have some things in the chat box. One is, what a great feeling to know we helped him. Yay, Richard, for doing all of this. Yay to our Rotary for doing this. And so thank you, Rotary, and thank you, Richard. And we have a great question from Maria. Maria, would you like to share your question with the class? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Um, so, Richard, I was just curious, going back to something that we did, um, has it been now a few years, uh, what is the status of their need for computers and or technology at this time? Um, I know that likely Dr. Bain and I would be very interested in supporting um, any continued endeavors in that direction. Thank you very much, Maria, for asking about this. I forgot to mention that. About three years ago, Alo, who was a former member of our club, uh, went down to Monterey and met with the students and he realized that some of the students didn't have computers, which is quite a disadvantage if you're a university student. So we have now given three computers. Uh, Susan Morera picks out the person who needs it the most. And we've delighted to have another contribution. We can buy, they can get a computer in Monterey for about $250 US. It'd be fantastic. We, we, we could do this once a year. It'd be fantastic. Thank you so much. I, I, I'd like to be, a, uh, I know, and I know I speak on behalf of Dr. Bain and I that we'd like to be a part of that again, please. Um, it, it just seems like it's something that they might even need more now. So. That would be fantastic. Uh -huh. okay. if you could, well, we could talk, contact me and we can just yes. get together with Allison, our Club treasure. That'd be perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, Richard, and thank you, Maria. That's a great question. And if anybody else would like some more information on that, you can contact Richard directly and, as he said, our treasurer, Allison. And that, my friends, rounds out our foundation minute or two. And now we're growing. We, this is the first official reading for Crystal Ramirez Garcia. She was proposed by Dawn. She has been our guest several times online. Dawn, would you like to share anything about our friend, Other Crystal? You're on mute. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> Other Crystal, yes. Um, Crystal is from South Furious. Um, just recently moved here to the Rivera area and is looking for um, community involvement. She's a high energy young lady. Um, I think she'd just be a super asset to the to the team. Sorry, I'm trying to sneeze and <clears throat> <laughs> but yeah, I think she would just really be a fun. And she's young and she brings vibrance into the room. So. Wonderful. Thank you, Don, for I'm not proposing. insinuating. I'm not insinuating that we're all old. Oh, <laughs> oh well, I thought Don was getting all choked up about it. <laughs> no, I know. No, I'm kind of like I'm eating, so I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, Thank you, Don, for that. And if anybody knows of any reason why Crystal should not be considered for membership then please do reach out to your very favorite director. And we have a new member orientation coming soon, possibly at our next Rotary After Dark on Monday, January 25, location to be determined. More information coming soon. And on to our featured presentation Let's see, Richard, I'm sorry, uh, Robert, would you be so kind as to introduce your colleague to us today? Yes, sir. Uh, we have as our, uh, for our program today, Dr. Muhammad Alam. He's Dean of the College of Engineering and my boss in so far as I have one. But uh, anyway, uh, Dr. Alam, came here from University of South Alabama where he was a department chair and uh, his um, uh, area of expertise is computer engineering. So uh, Dr. Alam, the floor is yours. 
All right. Thank you so much. So let me see whether I can share this screen. Oh, you know what? Let me, uh, let me. You have to allow me. Yep, 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 yep. And uh, you now, sir, have the ability. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see here. Oh. Well, I've selected the one participant can share at a time. Is that the option I select? Well, uh, so what you actually should do is just hit the green button that says share no, screen. Do um, you don't, so don't hit the up arrow next to it. Just hit the big green button. Oh, okay. I see. I was hitting yep. the wrong button. Not a problem. Not a problem. All right. And then that'll bring up a, there, yep, you got it. All right. Fantastic. Top notch. Well, let me make sure that I can see it. Great. All right. Well, uh, I want to thank uh, all of you for uh, giving me the opportunity uh, to connect with you and uh, to say a few things about our college. Uh, obviously, this is an institution uh, uh, that has started the journey in 1925. And uh, this university has been offering engineering programs since 1936. So uh, in today's presentation, I'll basically walk you through very quickly uh, with respect to uh, what we are doing and what are the type of programs we have. And at the end, I'll also ask you how uh, the Rotary Club can help us to uh, uh, move forward. All right. Uh, so our mission basically uh, is to enrich lives through uh, education, discovery, and service. And for engineering, basically our mission includes to uh, graduate engineers who become uh, productive citizens uh, and participants in industry, profession, and society. Our faculty and students, they also conduct research that contributes to the well-being and sustainable development of communities and industries in South Texas, the state of Texas, and the nation. We also provide uh, uh, meaningful service to the profession and communities that uh, surround us and beyond. Now our campus has five goals. Those five goals uh, include learning, research, student-centered uh, environment, prominence and growth. And what do we do in the college? Basically we try to align our activities with respect to these five goals. Uh, besides this, we also have six uh, imperatives from the system. So we try to align our uh, activities with respect to those in, um, uh, imperatives from the system. So uh, in the College of Engineering, let me give you a very brief uh, idea uh, with respect to uh, what we are doing in here. We have about 25% of the entire uh, campus enrollment. And then uh, we are also due to COVID, we are also uh, uh, reaching out to our students in the local, regional, as well as other states in the country through social media, just to bring uh, more students uh, in our uh, campus. Uh, we are also uh, very interested to make sure that uh, we bring students from the community colleges and to ensure that we have like two plus two agreements with so six community Hi. colleges. Uh, and uh, that includes Blaine uh, Southwest, Texas Junior College, South Texas College, Del Mar, Texas A&M International University and Laredo Community College. Besides that, we also have two plus two agreements with international in, uh, uh, universities. Basically, when I say two plus two, it implies that they study about two years in another university or community college, and then they uh, seamlessly transfer to our uh, uh, one of the engineering, computer science, or technology programs. Uh, we also recruit uh, students from other countries. In particular, uh, we, we get a lot of students from India, Nigeria, Kenya, South Africa, as well as uh, other countries. With respect to learning in the college, uh, we offer 22 degree programs, which includes 10 undergraduate, 10 masters, and two PhD programs. 
At this point, we have one um, new proposal uh, that is undergoing review at the Board of uh, Regents. In fact, Board of Regents just approved it. So it is, going to, um, go, uh, it is going to be submitted to the Texas Higher Education Coordination Board. So if that gets approved, we will have an additional undergraduate program in uh, computer engineering. Uh, we are working on a master's proposal uh, with, the, uh, with the College of Pharmacy that will be a master's in pharmaceutical engineering. So of the 10 undergraduate program, nine of our programs are accredited by AVET or ATME. I'm pretty sure you know about accreditation. It basically implies that the program that we offer, it uh, meets or exceeds the basic standard. In other words, a student graduating from MIT or Stanford uh, and the student graduated from here, graduating from here, they basically have the same type of accreditation. And AVET stands for Accreditation Board of Engineering and Technology. Uh, so our programs, uh, both at the undergraduate and graduate levels, uh, uh, we maintain uh, the quality for all of those programs. One undergraduate program that is BS in Industrial Engineering, that one we started last year. So before we apply for accreditation, we have to graduate at least one student. So uh, that therefore we cannot apply uh, for accreditation um, for that particular program. Uh, we also have three research centers and institutes and we are in the process of adding a new uh, research center on uh, basically it will be called water research center. So some of the rec uh, recent accomplishments, we just, uh, started a PhD in engineering. In reality, we had a PhD program in sustainable energy engineering, but that PhD program was narrowly focused. So what we have done, we have changed uh, basically or discontinued that PhD program and started a new one. We call it PhD in engineering. It has five areas of specialization, civil, electrical, chemical, uh, mechanical, as well as sustainable energy engineering. And we also started a new master's program uh, starting last summer that is called uh, Masters in Mechatronic Engineering. And as I mentioned, BS in Industrial Engineering, we started that in fall. Uh, the other program that we started, we call it BAS program uh, in Occupational Safety and Health. This is mainly intended for students from community colleges uh, who are not interested to pursue a regular engineering or computer science program. And there is a huge demand um, for this group of students. And that's the reason we started that program uh, starting actually uh, this uh, spring. Uh, COVID has been very, very uh, challenging for us. So uh, starting spring 2020, actually we are offering our classes either in hybrid mode, meaning uh, some students may come to the classroom and the rest, they attend the classes synchronously uh, through video link. And we are also, covering other activities such as senior design conference uh, through online uh, mechanisms. Uh, in the area of research, our faculty also has been very active. Later, I'll show you some more data to give you an idea of what kind of research uh, activities uh, we have pursued. Uh, we also added a $5 million research center uh, that is uh, funded by the National Science Foundation. Uh, this is the largest research grant that we received, I believe, since, uh, uh, since 2010. So we are very excited about it. This is a joint grant uh, with the College of uh, Agriculture. In the area of student activities, our students are also doing good. For example, our IEEE um, Eta Kappa New uh, student chapter, they had been recognized as one of the best student chapters worldwide four years in a row. Normally the uh, IEEE, which is the largest professional organization in the world with uh, nearly half a million members, they select 24 chapters from all over the world and our section is one of those four, uh, four years in a row. There are other uh, accomplishments, but I'll, I'll just highlight a few. All right, some of the other accomplishments include uh, uh, in terms of funded research awards. Uh, in 2016 fiscal year, our funded research award was about $1.6 million. When I say funded research awards, our faculty are required to submit proposals to do, uh, to do uh, quality research. Uh, so they submit proposal to various agencies like National Science Foundation, National Institute of Health, uh, Department of Defense, NASA, as well as industry. So in fiscal year 2016, we had about $1.6 million. 
So our faculty had been working very, very hard. And uh, in fiscal year 2020, that has increased to $11 million. So when we get grant, basically it helps us to support graduate students through research assistantships. It also helps us to attract quality, really bright graduate students to our uh, various programs. Uh, besides the regularly funded positions, research funding also allows us to hire faculty. Uh, faculty, when I say faculty, basically these are research faculty on soft contract. So in 2015, we had actually no faculty or postdoc uh, hired uh, through research grant. Now we have 12 people that we are supporting through externally funded research. Uh, we are also about to complete a special research lab. This will focus on sustainable energy. And uh, we invested quite a bit of uh, resources in it and it, will, um, it is almost operational. Our faculty are also active uh, in nationally visible activities. So uh, Dr. Jones, who is a Regents Professor in Environmental Engineering, he organizes a conference for uh, Environmental Protection Agency. So we are doing it, or he's doing it every year, and it brings a lot of visibility for the college as well as for the campus. Then uh, we are also chairing two other conferences. Uh, one is the IEEE conference. The other one is SPIE. Um, uh, and then Dr. Camacho, who is a junior faculty member, she is also co-chairing a conference uh, in environmental engineering. Uh, that conference is called Gordon Conference. Uh, our faculty are also active in presenting keynote, invited uh, talks and things like that for various professional organizations. Then uh, if you drove around our engineering complex, probably have seen the scaffolding and repair work going on for a long time. Uh, this is a long-term project and Dr. Deersing can give more information about it, but we are hoping that our repair work will be complete probably sometime uh, at the end of uh, 2021. There are a lot of challenges, but we are trying to address that. So if you see the status of the building from outside, please don't get uh, disheartened. We are working on it and the university is trying everything that um, uh, they can to uh, finish the repair work. So let's talk about enrollment. Uh, the red bar that you see in this plot uh, basically corresponds to our undergraduate enrollment and the blue one shows the graduate enrollment. And these two graphs shows the fall and spring enrollment. As you can see from these two graphs, our undergraduate enrollment went down uh, slightly in fall 2019 and spring enrollment also went down in spring 2020. The main reason COVID probably has uh, one role to play and there are other factors uh, uh, involving our uh, admissions process or so, so we are going to address that. However, our one of the major concern is the de decline in uh, graduate enrollment. As you can see from the uh, blue bars, it went down quite a bit. And to explain what happens with international students, I'll just uh, show you this particular slide. This one came from American Society of Engineering Education. They keep track of enrollment, both for domestic and international students. As you can see, uh, the number of visas awarded to international student, uh, uh, that's the students coming from India went down 87%. So these are students like we admitted, they qualify to pursue their study here or any other institution, but we have no control over visa. So that had a big role to play with respect to the reduction in graduate enrollment. For students from Japan, uh, I think again, it is 87%. From India, it is 80, 88% down. From China, it is 99% down. From South Korea, 75% down. From Mexico, 60% down in terms of vis visa issued to uh, students who wants to pursue graduate study here. So now what we are trying to do is to allow international students to take classes from their own country through online. And that is helping us to bring back our uh, international student enrollment. All right, uh, retention is also a big priority for the college. So as you can see in 2019, 2020 timeframe, uh, our retention rate, our goal was 70%, but our retention rate right now is about 77.6%. Now, uh, when I talk about undergraduate enrollment and retention rate, one thing we need to keep in mind because of the particular demographics uh, in this uh, campus, we get a lot, it's over 55% of our students our first generation students. And we get a huge fraction of our students who are underprepared. 
So when they see they have to take calculus one or physics or chemistry class, we lose a lot of students basically in the first semester or so. So to address that, we have a, uh, we have a tutoring center where we help the students so that they get up to speed with respect to their uh, uh, classes, uh, assignments, uh, uh, as well as other activities. That is helping us to some extent, but still we lose a lot of first uh, generation students. Uh, the main reason is that they are, uh, they are not prepared adequately for uh, engineering or computer science programs. Let's talk about our graduation rates. So here the top two curves corresponds to the graduation rate for the campus. This one is four year graduation rate. So if a student comes in, what fraction of those students graduate within four years? So the campus average is about 24%, college average is about 25%. How, however, if you look at the uh, six year graduation rate, then you see that the campus six year graduation rate is about 39% and the college graduation rate is about, uh, about 48%. So with respect to graduation rate, I think uh, our college is, uh, is doing uh, okay. With respect to number of degrees awarded, again, you see that um, uh, the college is leading the campus. Uh, uh, in 2016, actually we awarded 53% of the total number of degrees awarded in campus. But you have to keep in mind that in 2016, over 50% of the students enrolled in the college were international students. So due to the big drop in international student enrollment the graduation rate went down quite a bit. And now we are basically trying to bring back uh, uh, the uh, enrollment so that our uh, number of degrees awarded also uh, increases. So besides uh, uh, educating students in our classroom, we also want to make sure that they get involved in extracurricular activities. So any student who uh, pursues an undergraduate degree in the college, they have to do a two semester uh, uh, senior design project. So this particular picture that you are seeing, this is called ChemiCar, where students designed a car uh, using uh, disposable uh, components. And then uh, at the same time, it, has, uh, it is environment friendly. So this particular a chemical project actually received the first prize uh, from a chemical engineering uh, society, the American Society of Chemical Engineers from the uh, south, uh, uh, from the southwest region. This one is a bridge building competition done by our architectural and civil engineering students. This one also received the first prize uh, involving uh, institutions from the US as well as from Canada. These are uh, students who are presenting their senior design as well as thesis related uh, research work at uh, professional societal meetings. And this particular one, we want to make sure that besides studying in the classroom, presenting their work uh, in professional societies, senior design projects, uh, we also want our students to get involved in community uh, activities. So here um, uh, you see our students who are basically trying to clean up an area uh, uh, in the beach. So we always encourage students to get involved in uh, community service uh, activities. With respect to tuition fee, I think uh, our campus provides a very good deal. So for example, uh, if an undergraduate student who is a resident uh, of Texas, who is a US citizen or a permanent resident, uh, if that student takes 15 hours, they pay about $4,200 of tuition fee. If you compare that with University of Houston or UT Austin or, or even Corpus Christi, you'll see that uh, our campus provides the uh, best deal. And for non-resident, mainly international students, obviously it's about uh, three times. They're paying about $11,000 or so. But still our uh, international uh, tuition fee is also uh, lower compared to other institutions uh, in the region. For graduate students, again, if the graduate student uh, uh, is a US citizen or a permanent resident that for nine credit hours, meaning three courses, they pay about $2,700. If you compare that with University of Houston, UT Austin, uh, Texas A&M Corp Corpus Christi, uh, as well as uh, College Station, you'll see that our students pay uh, the lowest uh, tuition fee. And for international students or non-resident students, obviously the tuition fee is, uh, is much higher. So uh, if you know anybody, probably this is a good talking point to uh, inform students that we have the best deal available uh, uh, probably in the state. 
So besides uh, uh, teaching, our faculty are also involved in um, uh, various types of research activities. Uh, a faculty can pursue research work in any area he or she wants, but for the college, we have five priority areas. Those areas are data engineering, hydrology and environment, energy systems, materials and structures, as well as imaging and security. So in general, we try to focus our attention to these areas and we try to hire faculty who are uh, related to some extent to um, any of these major areas. And by doing so, actually, we, we were able to increase our research quite a bit. So these are our funding sources, and this is a partial list. So it starts with NSF, Environmental Protection Agency, Department of Energy, Department of Education, Office of Naval Research, DOD, NASA, NIH, USDA, pretty much all uh, federal agencies uh, are funding uh, our faculty research activities. In addition to that, we have many uh, industries who are supporting research here. That includes Halliburton, City of Corpus Christi. Actually, our faculty in environmental engineering, they are uh, monitoring the ozone layer in Corpus Christi because we have lots of oil refineries and that is affecting the air quality. Uh, other companies include Samsung, Sianco uh, Corporation, and things like that. Mohammed, I'm sorry to interrupt. We have about one minute and a half. Okay, I'm almost done. Okay. So research was, as I mentioned, about $11 million uh, in the fiscal year 2020. Uh, our faculty research power had increased from uh, 24,000 in 2015 to over 133,000 right now. Uh, these are departmental breakdown. Uh, this shows the uh, research faculty that we hired. This one shows the publications per faculty. Our goal is two, but right now our average is 2.36 per faculty. I'm also, I spend a quite a bit of time connecting with community members, alumni base, as well as people from industry. And this picture shows the alumni who are doing really, really outstanding a job in their career, we recognize them. So this is an, a slide that I want to spend a little bit of time. Uh, we are very, very uh, interested to gather resources from the uh, alumni base, uh, community members, as well as local industry. So last year alone, uh, we provided over $6 million in terms of scholarships for, for our students. Uh, that is the total money awarded from the campus and from the college. And from the college alone, we provided about $1.74 million. So we'll be very interested to see how you can help us uh, with respect to uh, generating more scholarships for our first generation students. Uh, these are some of the goals I mentioned it earlier. So some of the major challenges that we have, uh, increasing enrollment is a challenge. I think uh, our Rotary Club members can talk positively about the college. Uh, we provide a very good learning environment. It is a common quiet area. A student can focus in their study and we go the extra mile to make sure that they succeed. Uh, the other point I'd like to mention that the people who graduated from our campus, they actually led the, uh, some of the most uh, competitive as well as large uh, corporation in the world. For example, uh, the CEO of ExxonMobil, uh, Bill Stevens was a graduate of our college. CEO of American Electric Power, Bill Shockley was a graduate of our electrical engineering program. Howard Energy CEO of our, I think, $2 billion company, a recent graduate uh, of our program. So I think our faculty are doing a great job in terms of educating and preparing our students. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to conclude, and I want to remind you that we, we, we get snow sometimes once in a while in here. <laughs> Any questions? Well, thank you so much, Muhammad. We certainly appreciate you spending some time with us today. Unfortunately, we have to move on real quickly so that everybody can get back to work. We do have a few upcoming events. Pay, pay close attention to Rotary After Dark and our upcoming in-person hybrid meeting and Lone Star Pets is coming up soon. And let's go on now to our weekly Paul Harris drawing winners and to our leaderboard with a drum roll, please. Five, four, three, two, one. Pair number one, Danny and Susan, congratulations. Remember every week is a new opportunity to pair with your fellow members. And now, if you will please join me in the four-way test of the things we think say and do? Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? 
and will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful day and a prosperous week. Thank you, Dr. Alam. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see you guys. Thank you, Dr. Alam. Thank you. Bye.